bacteria and lichen on the side facing to the tower. Now, in New Zealand, the biologist told me that we should only have lichen and bacteria on the south side. We were getting this on the north side facing directly up to the radio tower. And on the, on the east side, the radio tower, they were getting it on the west facing to always in the circumference the bacteria was growing in the direction of the frequency exposure. The trees that were behind the corrugated iron buildings were totally healthy, normal leaves, normal flowers, normal fruit, no problem at all. Now the FM was actually taken off in the uh, beginning of 2011 and since that time this bacteria has fallen off these trees. Um, they're now looking healthier, it, it's completely different and the birds and the bees are coming back and um, prior to that um, the birds were actually falling out of the sky. They, they, when they increased the power, they, they were actually dying, falling dead on the ground. Mm. Um, so it's pretty amazing. It was like Rachel Carson's Silent Spring. And the big, straight, tall pine trees, approximately 800 metres from the tower, great big pine trees. They, at the tops of them, you can actually see them twisting and writhing and distorted. Their branches are all like tied up in knots where they've tried to get themselves away from the frequency which was they were in direct line of sight and it's absolutely incredible to see trees that have obviously in pain from this sounds incredible doesn't it you say trees in pain but when you look at these branches when you look at these branches the, tr the, the trees grew straight and tall until the year the FM was put on and you can actually see the complete reaction of the trees it's a real learning curve at my farm I can tell you well, I mean, trees are living beings, as we all are, and, and the tree die-offs have been reported right across the country. Northland's in a, a terrible state of drought there at the moment. Uh, many people are trying to connect radio frequencies along with the oh, okay. heavy, heavy chem right. trailing that's happening. I right. um, have mentioned before that the you know the pines and conifers seem to be the, the worst being hit. I did notice when I was down... Uh, uh, in Christchurch the day after the September 4th quake uh, the destruction around the airport area of, of the pines uh, not around the area further out from, from that area but I believe that's, that's beginning to come back now, now you, well, you were probably looking up by Harewood Golf Course Harewood Golf yes. Course is where yes. the frequency actually focuses across the top now it's ah, very interesting well, because ah. I've seen that the two places where it focuses each side of the airport um, is where the uh, earthquake damage has actually been and also where the trees have been twisted. But um, um, pine trees are particularly susceptible to frequency because each pine needle acts as an antenna. Now, I'm not saying that. I'm saying what researchers have actually told me. You've got the, it's like a long, thin um, antenna. And, well, and different what... trees react differently. Let's get, thank you for that information, Penny. Now, you claim that the area for microwave exposure harms the bees. Uh, at, near your farm which is very frightening when 80% of the western world bees have vanished in the last few years and the technology is continuing to expand I saw here during uh, after the Christchurch quake again bees just dying en masse and you know here we are in spring and I have yet to see a honeybee I've seen a couple of bumblebees and I've seen many wasps Penny um, I, well, I got excited I got excited the other day when I saw and then discovered it was a wasp. So okay, mm. no, they're they're doing a lot of research around the world on the um, um, banishing eight percent of the Western world. The bees have actually banished, and they're actually um, saying that they think it's from sprays. But the extraordinary thing is that my farm, because I'm an organic farm, I don't use any sprays at all, and the bees vanished when I was actually there. Now, uh, in the last few years, I've rented since they've actually, um, I've, I've rented the land to uh, vegetable people up the top who actually spray all the time. Um, but since they've, this year, they're still spraying up there, but the bees have actually come back. So when I didn't have any sprays, the bees vanished, and now they have got the sprays since they've altered the FM, the bees have actually come back. So it is well, quite interesting. It is. I think that's a that's a huge rabbit hole on its own, Penny, because I witnessed a plane spraying low, and and this was witnessed by other members in my community. A plane sprayed low over us, left yeah. a white residue all over my organic vegetables, and yeah. that's when the bees started dying here. Now, oh, whether okay. that was coincidence with um, the harsh frequencies we were under or not, I don't know, but certainly this is one that 
th these people have got to pick up because, you know, as you say, without the bees, well, <laughs> what have we got? Well, uh, it seems to be the very high frequencies that affect the bees. And one of the other things that they've actually done research on a putting a cell phone near um, a beehive and the, the bees wouldn't come back to the beehive. Um, but I think also a lot of the beehives actually have a metal roof. You know, they have a little you know, bit of metal or metal bands around them. So this might actually increase it because I've heard of other people who put their beehives under trees or behind buildings away from um, cars and they've actually, their bees haven't died. So I think these are the things that will actually show the um, connection uh, to healthy and unhealthy bees. If you put a beehive out clear line of sight to a cell phone town, they get sick and you then put the hive behind a building or under trees and they don't get sick. Um, they'd have to be taking the same sprays. I mean, I think these are things that have to be looked at. But, of course, industry's trying desperately to say it's not the microwaves that's causing the bee death, it's um, sprays. But we've had sprays for years and years and years, and we're probably more responsible about the use of sprays uh, now than we were 20 years ago. But the bees were surviving, whereas now they're not. Penny, uh, one of the effects you developed after exposure to high levels of radio frequency at your farm was uh, an allergic reaction when you were in the area of radio frequency and microwaves beamed. Can you explain this extraordinary effect for us? Yes, it is an extraordinary effect. And I first experienced this effect six months after I left my farm and only after my health had improved and that I no longer had heart palpitations, asthma and the appalling bone pain. But I found when I drove to my farm in certain areas, I would feel very, very hot, as if I had a temperature. My ears would buzz, I would dry retch, and find it very difficult to breathe with a bad pain in my throat and my chest. And the extraordinary thing was, was my dogs that were in the back of my utility used to start to cry and run around circles at the same time as I wouldn't be feeling very good. And the dogs had both been very sick when living at my farm. One had had several seizures and eventually died at the farm. And he didn't have any seizures when he was away from the area. Well, later on, when I visited people in the area, I just found my radio frequency allergic reaction always occurred where the cluster illness was reported um, around. And um, I think they said, all right, what we'll do is we'll blindfold you and drive you around and you won't know where you are. So they did that. They blindfolded me. And, and um, it was always exactly the same place that I would start to dry retch and feel really sick and they would mark where it was and, and um, when we later obtained the aerial license it was found these locations corresponded with the areas that the most power was focused through and what we later found out was where the frequency wave peaked was again where I was reacting strongest. Now I drove circles, I drove 2K circles and I drove 5K circles and I drove 10K circles and I marked everywhere that I was actually getting this reaction and it was in a straight line like the spokes of a wheel coming from the Aurelia Tower and even 10 k's away when I stopped and talked to people there would be clusters of illnesses in the area where it was actually focused through. They've actually done, I mean they've got, uh, there was a recent court case in Italy um, over a Vatican AM, FM tower which was focused out over the, the, the um, Rome and um, there were clusters of children with leukaemia at 12 kilometres from where this tower was focused and the cancer uh, group that actually studied this effect attributed it totally to the Vatican radio tower. If anybody wants to look it up, it's on the web, uh, Vatican court case. It's very interesting. And they actually um, were suing the engineer who was running this for manslaughter, but he suddenly died. So the mm. case hasn't gone ahead. What did you do when you experienced these unusual reactions? Or uh, are you just one-off, or does this happen to all the other people? Well, I think it does happen to a lot of people, but I think um, probably because my dogs reacted at the same time as I did, and the sort of pattern was coming. I was coming into the area, and my health would change at the same place every time. So it sort of became quite obvious. But I think many people um, don't actually realize they become electrosensitive which is actually now diagnosed as a, a uh, disease in places like Sweden. I, um, it, 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 it is an extraordinary situation and the Chapman trip tried to, um, in the um, environment court hearing, tried to make out that I needed to be in a mental home. I claimed I could um, 
didn't know where the radio frequency was and it was all so weird and I found it all quite embarrassing. But I've now researched it and, and it is, it's a very, very well researched um, scientific phenomenon. They call it radio frequency hearing. I call it radio frequency allergic reaction. And um, I think once people actually recognize the sensitivity can be occurring, it makes them easier for people to cope with because it is, it, it's a hard thing to live with if you don't actually know what's causing your, your allergic reaction. I mean, some people are allergic to burglar alarm systems. I mean, if they're using computers all the time, they can develop a, a sensitivity to electromagnetic radiation. Um, and some so, people are probably more sensitive than other people. Well, but yes, it, 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 it's just to raise awareness of, of, of really what the situation can be. I mean, I can't use a cell phone. Um, it, my face goes absolutely bright red, and, and um, I sort of lose balance. Um, uh, it, so, it, you know, it, it's just something you have to learn to live with. And people, people head off to their medical centres and doctors and get pills to uh, sure. help them with these things and then they're sure. diagnosed with everything but, uh, yes. you know, the, the reality of it. Now, I understand, Penny, that you wrote to uh, Dr. Bruntland, Director General of the World Health Organisation, um, after you heard that she too was electromagnetically sensitive and had a sign on her office advising anyone entering to turn off their cell phones as she experienced bad allergenic headaches and uh, when the phones were activated. Yes, it was. I, I, somebody emailed this to me and, and I thought it was quite extraordinary and I actually wrote to her and sympathised with her affliction and um, explained to her what was actually happening here in Christchurch, that wherever the frequencies were actually focused, we had clusters of very sick people, including uh, children with leukemia in a, in a circumference of five k circumference of rear radio tower. And I actually um, asked if, um, if they could fund a Christchurch health study with who uh, to, to establish it, because Christchurch has got one of the highest incidents of suicide, home violence, and uh, cancer in the Western world for the city of Christchurch. We also have more radio stations, and yes. um, we, we also have these inappropriately cars where all the frequencies are interacting, and the trees and the beam lines were stunted, and, and the, the, it would have been the most wonderful um, opportunity for the World Health Organization to actually um, study this because the people who were exposed had no idea over the last 10 years they'd actually been exposed because... Um, nobody knew it was on, it didn't have consent.